Hi, my name is Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So today I wanted to talk about twisted tales, and I don't mean stories, I mean tales like this one from Slobodan Stankovic as presented at ICCF 22 in Azizi in Italy in 2019. And this was with HHO on graphite. And he observed many of these spheres. If you go to this link, bit.ly slash HHO dash spheres, you can see where he is talking about these and analyzing them. And I have shown that if we put the non-radiating boundary of the sacred geometry to the boundary of this silicon sphere, then the weak point is this circular section at the bottom through which it is spewing this carbon rich material. Now, of course, it did come from carbon and HHO. And so it's not surprising you would see carbon in there. But this silicon is interesting in that silicon is the fusion of carbon and oxygen. And so we have this silicon sphere. There is this breakthrough here, which I have suggested is possibly the N minus one tors breakthrough here and also you might notice that there appears to be two spheres of a smaller nature here and on this smaller sphere it also has a weak point at the bottom where it appears to be spewing some material out. Anyway so if we move on uh, I referred to this in a recent presentation this image that I prepared to give to Takaaki Matsumoto in Japan nearly on this day last year and comparing his carbon film synthesized in his explosive cold fusion in his carbon film with uh, iron containing iron with that observed on the Vega Valley Eastern Plateau which I did an observation here on the 19th of uh, April 2022 although this was produced in 2021 and you can see these uh, carbon silicon type filaments here these tubular filaments uh, tubular filaments tubular filaments tubular filaments tubular filaments here in this otherwise bulk of synthesized material that has come from in my view a large ball lightning breakup and in here we can see at the end often of these carbonaceous deposits, this film of carbon, there are these iron rich crenellated microspheres. There's a little one here that's kind of in there but it has this plume coming off it, this like comet trail coming off it. There's one up here with the comet trail. And I'm going to show some more examples of this. I've shown this video before but it's as well to discuss it now. And so here it is, and you can see many, many examples. We will come to this ball in a minute, but you can see up here, there, it's on a car, copper and zinc oxide background, so it's a nice contrast. That's a little ball there. You've got a whole cluster of different scale iron-rich crenellated spheres here embedded in the carbon deposit and elsewhere. And then we'll see a whole series of these ones which are at the end of trails. Here's one that's kind of covered with copper but one next to it which isn't. And so this also happens and we do know these things pick up the surrounding material. And as we go round this uh, you can see often they're at the end of trails of carbon. Here's another blown up one. Some spheres embedded in the carbon field another one here and this is quite nice because this is at the end of like a comet trail it literally looks like a comet trail and that's carbon and other materials that was formerly traveling with it this one very clearly at the end of a carbon deposit cleaned itself off this one in the middle this one kind of in the middle this one in the middle but they're literally everywhere so one ball lightning breakup has the potential to produce a lot of iron rich crenellated spheres. Actually Slobodan, Slobodan noted that the 
silicon dioxide ones on an, under an optical microscope, he could see through those. So they were actually hollow. Again, at the end of a trail. So we look at this one and we see that the trail itself has sulfur, which is fused oxygen, and then carbon and oxygen uh, in there. It's probably looking through to the oxygen that's on the copper and the zinc. So yes, this is the copper and zinc. And then on the actual iron ball, uh, there are traces of aluminium and silicon, but principally it is um, iron and, um, how should we put this, iron and oxygen. <laughs> There's a trace detection of gold there. Is that something to do with the fact that it started with copper in the mix? I don't know. It's certainly not nothing to write home about. Um, anyway, on the discs, the two discs that came out, the bi discs here, you can see that the main uh, material here which is new, which is titanium, um, that is a weight of 21% of these discs. And of course, titanium is two carbons, uh, sorry, one carbon and two oxygens fused together. And obviously you've got the carbon and oxygen. So that makes up the bulk of the material. There's some remaining uh, copper and zinc in there. Again, when we look at this, we have 11% of titanium. There's also some calcium in there and some uh, silicon close to the structure in the tail we can also see some calcium creeping in there okay we also saw in the binjiren huang system these plumes of material coming out and this has a range of elements in it okay so what I'd like to do now is look at a new deep zoom image and I'm running on a first generation M1 MacBook Pro and I downloaded the two week trial of Windows 11 combined with uh, Parallels from Parallels.com and if I swipe over you can see here that I am running the Phenom image viewer here on a Macintosh. And what I've done is I've copied the DZI into a RAM disk. So I will include the place where you can download the RAM disk for your Mac. And this allows me to zoom around this deep zoom image. Now what happened was when I was with Phil in Prague, we ran out of time and so I had to stop the deep zoom image generation process. Unfortunately, it saved everything here, and it's very fortunate because since we have seen in um, here in this O'Day Deep Impact, you'll recall we saw the impact here with these tendrils coming off, these filaments coming off, and the one that came up here, and there was an iron-rich crenelated sphere with a shepherd's crook uh, hook around the top uh, of... Um, other material and so this is another example of these iron rich crenelated spheres coming from uh, the breakup product of the uh, ball lightning like structure and once you've seen this and you've seen it across multiple systems so in Henk Urien's system and in this system you can then kind of go ahead and see if there are any other examples. And it is incredibly striking. They are literally everywhere. It's like that case when you find a new word. And so if we go into this structure here and we zoom around, and for those that do have an M1 series MacBook, this is a very good solution to uh, seeing this. So you can see here, uh, this example here is really rather nice. Um, I've got the scale set up here and I can zoom right in so we can see that it is about four microns across. 
So if we actually took better resolution of this, it would have some crenellations on there. But you can see you have the sphere, and then out of the back of the sphere, we have what appears to be two tails uh, with vorticity and twisting going on them. Uh, down here, there is a, another one which is kind of embedded itself into the substrate. It does appear to have a twisted combinatory tail here. This one tends to have, uh, it gives an indication, maybe it's got two tails. Um, and it, it's what it's called is neck, you know, the, like the neck of a light bulb. And you'll see this all over this sample. There are hundreds of different scales here. Uh, many of them are embedded into the material. But as you go around this, and you can take your time going around it, you'll see here again the ball with the neck, with the material orbiting around the outside, uh, connected here. And there are many, many, many examples. And uh, it's also at very many different scales. So you can see there's one kind of burrowing in here. Is this the tail from it? I don't know. There's one here. Uh, there's pro probably one here, but there are many at different scales. So these ones are far, far smaller, okay? And just as you saw on the Henk Urian uh, Vega Valley sample, one ball lightning, as I said earlier, can break up into many of these iron-rich crenelated spheres. So again, here's the ball, here's the neck, and it would appear that it's silicon around the outside and calcium a bit further away. This is what we observed in the ultra experiment conducted by Alan Goldwater in his Magic Sound Lab. The iron-rich crenelated sphere has some carbon on it, but often has silicon dioxide, silicon being the combination of carbon and oxygen, and obviously oxygen uh, is there pretty much everywhere. But the, the balls are literally everywhere. So in my view, uh, here, here, look, here's, here's a good couple of examples. You've got one emerging here, and you've got one here. Is this the tail coming in, or is it over there? I don't know. If you were to look at this in more detail, uh, you would uh, find out for sure. But the pattern is emerging of how these things are structured, how they come about. Uh, what fuel is feeding them. They present themselves obviously differently depending on which material they're in. Matsumoto observed this when he had cesium, it, it was all spiky balls. When it was lead, it was very lumpy balls. Um, and here you go. So you've got the ball with, with the little neck on it. It's quite isolated, that one. Uh, this one's got a little twisted tail on it. Many, many, many examples. I mean, they're just all different scales. So here's a, here's a small one. But uh, you can download the DZI and look at it in your own time. Here's one with its kind of tail. Uh, it's less resolved because it's not cleaned itself off. Sometimes they are still partially buried in the material that was formerly orbiting around them. Um, but yeah, look at this one here. Many, many, many examples. This one here, it looks like the, the tail is down this end and it kind of came to arrest its final demise. This one's quite interesting because um, it's actually made of a different material. It might even be made of carbon. So, um, we know they are made of different materials. So the ball lightning acquires material and it builds and it builds and it builds. Here's some that are really rather embedded. So you've got one here, which is rather embedded. And another one here. So the reason I put this to a RAM disk on the Mac is that these DZI images, navigating around them, is very dependent on read-write, specifically read, because you're zooming in and out of uh, images 
and it's loading up the next image scale as you're zooming in. Here you can clearly see the material orbiting around the outside and possibly you, you might consider that this is the tail that's been following this sphere. This one, maybe this is the neck of it. It's interesting that m many of these you'll see are the shape of a light bulb. <laughs> I wonder if there's any relevance to that. Again, here attached over here. This one's quite embedded. Many, many, many examples of this phenomena. So, yeah. Essentially, you can have, it tends to be the lighter material that's spewing out, or it's the tail. Is this material that was synthesized in the much larger structure and the some coherent blobs of material ends up becoming the iron, or is it the subfractal sacred geometry structures? I kind of suspect it is and it's depositing uh, the spheres and then the material behind it. I don't know, but for me, this is conclusive proof that whatever is going on in the thunderstorm generator is also something that was going on in the HHO on graphite of Slobodan Stankovic, where he saw transmutation of materials and presented that at ICCF 22 in 2019. And it's the same thing that was going on on Henk Urien's Vega experiment, which we, in my view, conclusively pr proved the breakup products of ball lightning uh, and their arrangement, which matched the arrangement of the breakup products, uh, or rather the synthesis products and arrangement in the balls produced in an ultra experiment by Alan Goldwater in his Magic Sound Lab. So yeah, that's that's it really. Um, when you see the pattern, everything else kind of becomes clear, and uh, you get a real idea of how this process ends and the synthesis products. So I guess the more silicon that's synthesized, the more calcium that's synthesized, the more gases that are synthesized that are not carbon dioxide. So for instance, let's say nitrogen or oxygen or neon, these kind of gases, if they're synthesized and expelled, let's say argon even, one might expect that argon is something that gets synthesized because it's a reasonably high concentration in the Earth's atmosphere. So knock yourselves out with this DZI image and I will see you in the next video.